You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence that stalks in darkness or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adler, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them with long life. I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. And the gospel today comes to us from Mark 10 as we continue our readings in Mark, verses 35 through 45. If you are able, would you please stand for the reading of the gospel? James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with Jesus, be angry, excuse me, with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, you know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you, for whoever wishes to become great among you must first be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and give his life a ransom for many. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Father God, we give you thanks for your written word, carried on through generations, faithfully transmitted so that we can hear your voice. And Lord, uh, I ask you would give me words to speak today, to encourage, to challenge, to give hope. May the words that I speak and the meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Have you ever been to a church camp or maybe in a group building exercise at work where they did some team building exercises? Uh, I've been through some obstacle courses. Uh, sometimes you have to get everyone in your team over certain things. Uh, and there's all, always, uh, several times, done the, the trust fall. Ra raise your hand if you've ever done a trust fall anywhere. All right. So there's a lot of different ways you can do a trust fall. Um, I've done them as a, both a camper and a counselor. And, 
And sometimes you can just have partners who will, uh, one person stands behind the other one and you kind of close your eyes and cross your arms and lean backwards and the other person kind of catches you as you're sort of about this angle. <laughs> and you just have to, to lean back and trust that they're going to be there. Um, I've also done a few with a, a group of 10 or so, 8 or 10, where I think we stood on a um, tree stump that was a foot or two tall and had uh, the group behind you linking arms and you had to do the fall backwards that way. And that's a little bit scary <laughs> when you're, you're a little bit higher and, and uh, but it's a lot of fun and kind of, kind of scary at the same time. It's all fun and games, of course, when you're at camp or you're in a, a, a group at work. It's an entirely different thing when you are trusting other people in real life. And sometimes it's a lot more stressful. I keep on hearing about a supply shortage going on in all of our stores today, and it seems that there's also a short supply of trust in our world today. All kinds of us are struggling to trust government leaders, bosses, business partners or co-workers, doctors, law enforcement officers, pastors, teachers, school leaders. The list could go on. What is going on in our world? Why is it so hard to trust these days? probably has something to do with the fact that we're all living through some of the most difficult times of our lives. The pandemic has affected all of us, whether we have lost a loved one to the disease or lost a job or lost time with family and friends, lost a normal school experience. On top of the regular stresses of life, that we all have, we add this, and it's just so hard. I saw a meme on uh, social media this week that said, you know who's having a really hard time today? Everyone. <laughs> so practice kindness. And I think that's a good thing for us to remember, right? We're all struggling in some fashion or another some of us more than others, but I think all of us to some degree. We could all probably use several good sessions with a therapist. And I think in some ways that's what we have opportunity to do this morning as we open the scriptures and we invite the Holy Spirit, the, the counselor, the comforter to speak to us through Psalm 91. Now, if you think our situation today is bad, I can almost guarantee you that whoever it is who wrote this psalm, and it's not named in this psalm, was probably going through a harder life than we are experiencing, okay? 2,000 years ago, the average life expectancy was about 25 years old. If you were lucky enough to, as a child, live to the age of 10, you didn't die from disease or starvation, um, you probably had a good chance to live to 35, maybe 40. Very few lived older than that. And of course, disease, starvation, warfare, political upheaval, um, it was a dangerous and difficult time. And yet, the author of the Psalms could write these opening words, a psalm of deep trust in the Lord. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And as the psalm continues, uh, it keeps coming back to this theme of God as our refuge, of dwelling in the Lord, a place of security and safety in a world full of danger. That's 
if you need to only hear one thing today, God is a refuge. Now, this psalm has been um, famously carried on through, uh, through the scriptures by Christians and uh, by Jews for 2,000 years. Uh, in fact, I was surprised to learn this, this week as I studied that there are more um, archaeological evidence, there is more archaeological evidence for this text than any other text in the Bible, more than the Lord's Prayer, more than Psalm 23. Uh, psalm 91 is sometimes called the soldier's psalm. It has uh, been carried on bracelets, uh, necklaces, all kinds of different things that soldiers might wear into battle, or uh, for Christians in general to be reminded that God is a refuge as they go into uh, the dangerous world. And so there are uh, dozens and dozens of examples of this psalm, maybe just one verse, maybe, uh, maybe more than one, that are found all throughout the Middle East uh, and other places in the world. Evidence that this text was an important text to remind people of um, protection and the power of God. I want to begin by talking about speaking our trust. I don't think I really noticed that verse 2 reminds us that we know that God is the shelter and the Most High, but that person who lives in God's shelter will say, it says, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. It's important to speak or to sing or to proclaim our faith. Uh, perhaps especially when we're going through hard times. But I think that, that's what's sticking with me today, the first thing. Speak or say or sing your trust in God. Uh, it's not like a spell or an incantation. We can't make it happen because we say it. But um, I was told a long time ago, uh, a person who, you know, when you're going through challenging times, you need to have something to keep you going. And that's whether it's your faith in God or even just encouragement to yourself. And so this person told me, they had this phrase, I can do it, I can do it, I can, uh-huh. <laughs> I can do it, I can do it, I can, uh-huh. Just over and over. <laughs> and in some ways, this scripture can be kind of that refrain, although an even better way to say it than that because it put, puts our focus on God. We can say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. So I'm going to say it one more time then I'll invite you to, to say it with me. We'll say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Will you join me? My refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. So we can speak our trust in God, and sometimes we need to do that to remind ourselves. The second thing that I saw in this text this week is a whole list of things to be afraid of. In other words, the psalmist names fears. And so if we look at, at the list, um, and of course it was a helpful text to look at this week, several times it talks about pestilence or plague or pandemic, right? Deliver you from the snare of the fowler, a hidden trap set to um, catch a bird. You will not fear, in verse 5, the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day pestilence that stalks in darkness, or the destruction that wastes at noonday. All kinds of specific ways you can die. Disease, arrows, destruction, and they're named. Sometimes we have to, in order to overcome our fears, begin by naming them. And that can be a hard thing because we like to think we're pretty strong and not afraid. But we all have fear. We all have fear. Um, 
What are some of the fears? Some of the fears that we have. A fear of rejection. We might not uh, initiate that conversation with that person or talk to that boss or apply for that promotion or job. What if we don't get it? I don't know. Don't want to be rejected. Fear of being judged. Um, a lot of times people don't like to speak in public <laughs> because what will people think of me? Or even for me, stepping down here without my full notes, what if I say something really dumb? <laughs> or go on? And it's an important thing when you're speaking as a pastor to try to say what God would want you to say. And uh, so, yeah, I'm a little bit more nervous <laughs> down here. I don't see how Chris does it every week. <laughs> um, what are the other fears? Fear of missing out on opportunities? We, we've heard that. Um, fear of losing control? It's a big one. Um, fear of just losing things. <laughs> losing possessions, houses, place to live. Fear of the unknown. What if I do that? I have no clue what will happen. And so the psalmist names uh, a lot of those fears and yet does it in a way of saying God will be with you and God will protect you in those fears. Now, naming the fears is only one step in the process. Um, and there's a song that's in the, on the radio right now that has a chorus that says, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. And so as we name those fears, we don't dwell on them, but we give them to God, standing in God's love and asking to take refuge in the Lord, our protector. And fear is not always a bad thing. Um, verse 13 says, you will tread on the lion and the adder. Young, the young lion and the serpent, you will trample under your foot. So I think we should probably all go to the zoo and just step into that enclosure with the lions and the snakes because God is with us. Amen? No, no. I'm afraid of lions and snakes. I have not been trained in how to be with them and devices to use to keep them from killing me. And that's a good fear to have. Uh, I think that leads us into... Um, the next thing, there's a difference between um, trusting in God and tempting or testing God. And that's when we see this scripture, Psalm 91, appears in Gospel of Matthew and in Luke, and it's in Jesus' time of testing in the wilderness. And I want to read that to you from Luke chapter 4. Jesus has been fasting he, uh, the devil appears and tempts him to turn um, stones into bread, he tempts him to worship him so that he can have all kinds of power. And then the final temptation in Luke says in verse 9, the devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. But Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And I'm so grateful that Jesus um, quotes and responds to Psalm 91 in this context uh, because we can read these verses and psalms and think, wow, God will never fail us. I can walk with lions and snakes. I don't have to worry about the arrows that are flying at me. And that's not always the case. There's a difference between trusting in God and testing God. And Jesus said, I'm not going to jump off of this tall building. That's putting God to the test. Do I know that God can do that? Yes, I do. Do you know when Jesus was on the cross, the temptation was also present. And we have to wrestle with, well, Jesus knew Psalm 91. He didn't have to go through all of this. And yet, he suffered 
and he died. God does not always save us from pain. And it's also a reminder to us that the devil knows scripture <laughs> and can quote it. And so just because there's a Bible verse being shared doesn't always mean that God wants us to... Now, so for example, let's put practical, we're in a pandemic and we need to deal with whether we're living in fear and I don't think that God wants us to be fearful and afraid of any kind of a disease, whether that's COVID or cancer or Ebola. Or we don't need to live in fear because we can trust God is our refuge. On the other hand, I don't think we should all leave here after church, go to the hospital, to the COVID wing, invite everyone to take off their masks, and let's have an hour-long hymn sing Praising the Lord, because God is good and He will protect us, and I'm going to preach to you on Psalm 91. I think we probably all agree that would be testing God. And so each one of us has to find out where we are, somewhere in the middle there. We don't want to live in fear that anything could happen. I mean, you can die on, in the car going home from church today. There's all kinds of ways we can die, and we cannot live in fear. <laughs> But we cannot also, on the flip side, live uh, where we're testing God. So, Lord, give us wisdom. Finally, the psalm ends, the last three verses, are really the Lord speaking. Uh, it changes tone, changes voice, and it says in verse 14, Those who love me I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. With long life, Jesus lived to be 33. He didn't have a long life, although I guess maybe considering the time, <laughs> he was getting kind of older. But the point is, God will deliver us it just may not be in the way that we want that deliverance to happen. Jesus has always promised to be with us, and the promise of Scripture is that if we put our faith and trust in Him, we receive eternal life. We will never be separated from the love of God. And so whatever it is that we face, we can be confident, knowing that God will deliver us and save us and protect us. We have a refuge in God, and we can ask specifically how we would like that deliverance to come, knowing in faith that God has the power to do that. And if it doesn't happen in the way we wish, we can also trust that God will not let us fall out of his hand, that he will always hold us and keep us in the palm of his hand. So, Will you trust in the Lord? Will you be able to close your eyes and do that trust fall, <laughs> knowing that God is not going to play a joke on you? He's not going to let you crash um, down and entirely destroy your life. God will catch you. You can trust in the Lord. He is our refuge. My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Amen.